Welcome to Spooky Season Game Number 2! Sorry if this one is a little too late for Halloween, the end of October is always pretty busy for me. If it's not late, then uh, ignore that previous statement. Last time I played a somewhat older Horde shooter that was pretty obscure from the very beginning, so I figured this time why not pick out something a bit more new and popular right now. Well, it just so happens that the perfect game for this came out right as I was coming up with spooky game ideas. Get ready to build your deck, lock, and load, because we're seeing what the devs at Turtle Rock have been up to for these past few years. This is Back for Blood. Take as much as you can carry. You don't know what's waiting for us out there. Are you ready? You don't look ready, and the key to survival is being ready. Back for Blood is another one of these games that makes an attempt at realistic graphics while also trying to add just enough style so that it doesn't look dated later down the line. Of course, this game is brand new, so we won't know if it's dated or not until later, but for now, I think it looks fine. Design-wise, there's not much truly of note aside from the Ridden, the zombies of the game. The Ridden actually have a pretty cool design going on, in my opinion. For instance, the common Ridden actually change appearance over the course of a run, slowly gaining more spikes, becoming more aggressive, and overall just turning more monstrous, which is a pretty cool way to show that you're progressing and that the game is getting harder. And the different mutations of Ridden are pretty neat too, from the tall boys trying to smash your head in, to the spider looking things like the stinger spitting various kinds of acid webbing at you, to the wretches which either vomit acid, run at you with spewing toxic gas, or just exploding. You can easily differentiate each type of mutation from each other as well due to the sheer size and shape difference of them. Though I do wish the subtypes were easier to figure out, but I think that's kind of the point. Beyond that, the music is pretty good. Nowhere near as masterful as Left 4 Dead, obviously, but it's still good music to run around shooting zombie hordes to. And the sound design is all over the place, really. The voice acting's fine, but the guns could definitely use some better sounds. Meanwhile, the noises for the Ridden are actually really good and help to notify you that you should be on the lookout for a mutation nearby. And with all this talk of Ridden and mutations, let's get into what those even are. Some rest. You've earned it. I'll meet you back here after you've freshened up. The story of Back for Blood is pretty vague, honestly. The game doesn't directly tell you how all this went down, but the few cutscenes in the game and some in game character dialogue does help you piece it together. Essentially, before everything went to hell, there were these outbreaks of a mysterious parasite that were apparently digging into people's brains and turning them into these feral monsters that are now called the Ridden. The government tried to cover the whole thing up while dealing with them, but that didn't exactly work and the Ridden kept spreading and creating more Ridden, eventually turning buildings and entire towns into infestations to grow these things. And so, with society on the brink of collapse, a group of survivors came together and became the Cleaners. The Cleaners, operating out of Fort Hope, seek to purge the nearby town of all the Ridden and hopefully learn how to restore order to the world by creating a cure for the Ridden or something. According to the intro cutscene, the Ridden were effectively wiped out for a good while, but are now making a sudden return and now it's your job as the player to choose a Cleaner to play as and clean up this new Ridden mess while hopefully figuring out what's causing it. That's the basic summary, and as far as I can tell, the story doesn't extend much beyond that so there's not much to talk about, really. The story is serviceable for what it is. It's pretty much on par with Left 4 Dead's story, which pretty much just exists to give an excuse for you to go shoot zombies. And that's really what most Horde shooter stories are anyway. I do at least appreciate that there's some organization in the story, though. It's not just another group of zombie apocalypse survivors trying to find safety. It's an actual organized group with an actual goal to try and solve the whole zombie problem. Now, how do they go about solving this problem, you may ask? Let's get into that.
only a momentary setback. The simplest way I can describe the gameplay of Back for Blood is simply by calling it a more refined version of Left 4 Dead. The original Left 4 Dead games were and are still very fun, but they also certainly feel dated in certain aspects. Back for Blood tries to address most of these things. For one, your basic movement speed is faster here and you have the option to sprint, giving you a better chance of potentially escaping a dangerous situation. But the biggest change I see is the gunplay. Back for Blood has what feels like much more fluid gunplay to me. It took me a while to adjust my sensitivity, but after that it felt great. You can use ADS on every gun, and every gun feels like it's different enough to not just feel like a copy-paste of others. Certain shotguns are stronger but reload slower, rifles have different firing modes that can change their accuracy, etc. And on top of that, you find mods throughout your runs that you can use to add different scopes, stocks, magazine sizes, and more to alter your gun, such as giving a shotgun more range, or a sniper rifle more ammo capacity, or faster reload, that type of stuff. And on the note of specializing, let's talk about the card system. This has been the big selling point that differentiates this game from its counterparts. Essentially, before you start a run, you create a 15-card deck filled with various cards that give you different kinds of buffs and specializations. At the beginning of each level, the AI director will play corruption cards that alter and buff the Ridden, and then afterwards you choose to play certain cards from your deck to buff yourself and your team. You are essentially trying to outplay the game with your cards, stacking the right buffs and synergies together to counteract whatever the AI throws at you. It's an interesting mechanic that was really confusing during the alpha and beta releases, but they added a little tutorial here that helped explain it way better. And now I've got a deck built around Hoffman, for example, the nerd slash conspiracy dude. His character card gives him an extra grenade slot and more ammo. Well, there's also a card that gives an extra grenade slot and other cards that give more ammo. So I made a deck built around it, allowing me to have three grenades, two healing items, and more ammo than you can shake a stick at that I call Rat-tastic. It's worked pretty well for me so far, and honestly, I've had fun with the deck system. I think it just needs some extra refinement and a bit more variety to spice things up. Never abandoned your post. Good man. And that's really my overarching feeling about Back for Blood in general. It's a fine game, I've had plenty of fun with it, I just think it needs some extra polish to fix things like the seriously broken matchmaking system, as well as the AI teammates being dumb as bricks. Seriously, sometimes they can't even help you get out of certain pins like the webbing thing from the stinger. Aside from that though, I've enjoyed my time with this game plenty. There are a few complaints here and there, but I've had plenty of fun. So if you've got some friends and have been curious about this game, I'd say check it out. This has been The Ratman, and I will see you all later. And last but not least, a special thank you shout out to my Patreon with a $5 a month pledge is Punch McLarge Huge. Thank you for the $5. Razor wire. A little self-care here. Ah, taking this.